Hey guys, I'm Shan from Scott Studio. So today I'm going to show you guys how I created this animation loop. I have a bunch of other beginner friendly tutorials on my channel as well, so you guys can check them out. And with that said, let's get on with the tutorial. You can also download the project file from my website at skylarglobal.com, link in the description. So we're going to start by selecting everything with A and deleting with X. And now I'm going to add a curves path and tap into edit mode and select everything and move with G X while pressing control so that it snaps into the grid. And I'm going to make sure my last pivot point is on top of our origin. Now I'm going to select some of the vertices in the middle and pull them up with G Z and pull them down with GZ as well and just make it look a little curvy and now I'm gonna add a curved circle and move it to a side tab in edit mode select the top and the bottom vertices and scale them down in the Y axis with SY and now I'm gonna move them down a bit as well Select our first path and go to this tab over here and select the geometry tab and in bevel select object and the eyedropper tool and select the busier circle. Now your curve will look something like this. So what I'm going to do is tap into edit mode and with alt s0 I can scale it down and now I'm going to select the first word C and with alt S0 I'm going to scale it down as well and now I'm going to go back to our circle select it and tab into edit mode select these two points and and these two and scale them down with SY okay looks good now I might select the middle word C and push it back with GY as well and select these two points and scale them down as well so that I have a sharp edge in the middle of our petal or a leaf or whatever you're gonna call it and now I'm gonna select the object and go to the modifiers tab and add an area modifier I'm gonna deselect relative offset select object offset and add an empty shift A add an empty and play an axis Select the object and select the empty from the drop down. And now, if you rotate the empty, you guys can see uh, in the y axis you have two. So, I'm gonna select the object again and increase the count to about 32. Now, select the empty again and in the y axis type 360, divide or forward slash 32, and we have a perfectly evenly distributed array. So now I'm going to select both the objects from our outliner and duplicate them with shift D and move it forward with G Y and a little bit more. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode and select all the vertices and with control T and minus 90 I can rotate it in the X axis 90 degrees. So it kind of looks too flat right now so I'm going to select it and with R x90 I'm gonna rotate it in the x-axis and for the second one I feel like in the area modifier we can decrease the count to about 16 and I'm gonna select the second empty and in the y channel I'm gonna divide 360 by 16 now we have something that looks kind of like a flower I'm gonna select both the empty and the object and scale it down and then tab in edit mode and do a little bit of pushing and pulling vertices to get shape that I kind of like and I'm gonna push this back both the objects back a bit if you don't push both the objects the empty and the object it's gonna start looking wonky so you have to select both I'm gonna tap back into edit mode select these three vertices and pull them pull them forward with G and Y and now push the middle vertice back a bit and move everything back so yeah that looks cool for me for now I'm gonna leave it like that and now is a good time to save your file because it gave me a bunch of crashes so it's better to save your file and I'm gonna call it whatever I want and yeah now we're gonna move to the shading tab select your object and create a new material 
Delete the principal BSDF shader and add a noise texture. Noise texture. And make sure you have the Node Wrangler add on enabled. Add ons, Node Wrangler. Now you can use a few shortcuts like Control Shift to view our viewer node uh, noise texture and Control T to add a mapping and a texture coordinate map without having to select them and create them. So I'm going to scale in the Y axis 5 and plug the UV into the vector and we have something that looks like that and I'm going to make the X axis 0 and the Z 0. Z of course doesn't work but yeah so now I'm going to add a color ramp and get the black and the whites closer together something like this looks pretty nice for now and also I'm gonna add a mix shader and plug it in between plug the color, color into the factor and add an emission shader and I'm gonna make it kind of like a bluish color increases the strength to about 75 uh, 10 for now yep and I'm gonna add another emission shader and make it black just like to make it black and maybe Increase the strength to about one. Your one looks one is better. Just leave it at one and play with this white and the black values until you get something you want. So, something like that looks okay for me. What I'm gonna do is select the other object and add the same material to it, and yeah, that looks good as well. So, now what I'm gonna do is add another noise texture and leave it on top and with control T add another texture coordinate and a mapping node and plug the UV into the vector and add another mix shader and plug the mix shader into the mix shader bottom socket on the top and add another emission shader and I'm gonna make it something like a yellow value and plug the factor of the nice texture into the factor and it might make it something like yellow now if you view it you have something that looks like that so you can play with the scale the detail the distortion to get something uh, something cool what I'm gonna do is add a color ramp so that I have much more control over what's going on in the noise texture maybe switch the slots and yeah maybe that looks cool as well so I'm gonna decrease the scale to something like this yeah that looks good so the thing about this is we can animate any of all of these uh, scale the details the mapping node the location the rotation anything so we can actually uh, we can do all sorts of different stuff with these now I'm going to the world settings and making it fully black and I'm gonna add a cylinder and I'm gonna add number of vertices make it six rotate it in the x axis rx 90 and scale it up so that it covers our flower or whatever you will call it tab in edit mode and in face select mode select the front face and i'm gonna delete the front face okay that looks cool and we're gonna scale it in the y-axis s y and what we're gonna do is add our camera go into one in the numpad and with control alt zero we can place our camera inside the cylinder so I'm gonna add a material to the cylinder I'm gonna make it uh, one in the metallic and zero in the roughness 
and as far as I can see there's nothing so I'm gonna flat screen space reflection ambient inclusion and blue now we have some cool reflections over here and it looks kind of awesome so I'm gonna pull my camera back with G Y and place it somewhere over here so now we can scale uh, the cylinder and make any all sorts of adjustments to your preference and render view make sure you save the file because it kind of gave me some crashes when I did it before and you can also play with these uh, trace precision max roughness thickness and those are all going to affect your reflection and yeah so stick to something you like and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it 180 frames 179 frames and loop to the 180th frame and you guys can animate this with the empties and make some cool motions with the animating anim uh, empties so I'm gonna add keyframes to the empties with scale and rotation not location of course because the rotation rotation uh, the location makes it kind of weird so it's mo mostly scale and uh, rotation the both empties of course you can rotate and get some cool animations going on like now I'm gonna move to the first frame and add a keyframe with I and go to the 180th frame and add another keyframe so somewhere in the middle I'm gonna make the Y axis something like 50 or something yeah and add a keyframe and select the other empty go to the first keyframe add a keyframe with I last keyframe keyframe with I and middle somewhere add a few degrees maybe 42 looks good and I'm gonna add a keyframe and all of this animates and also you can add a scale animation like this uh, like that whenever there's a beat you want add a keyframe in the scale and in the middle you can scale it up scale it like that and add a keyframe so when you play it when the beat drops scales up and you can duplicate it place it and it drops like that so yeah there are a few ways those are the few ways you can animate this and you can also animate always with the shaders you can make it 4d in the noise texture and make sure you save it make it 4d and with the W you can get some cool animations there as well so with I you can add keyframes and change add keyframes to all these uh, uh, values over here so yeah that's it guys so if you guys make this tutorial tag me on your work so I can see them maybe and leave some feedback as well so follow me on insta I'll be posting more of my work there before I upload tutorials and I have a lot of videos like this in my channel so you guys can check them out as well and I'll be making three videos a week mostly character modeling videos and animation loops like this so on Mondays make sure you guys catch those animation loops and the rest of the week I'll be posting uh, more character modeling videos so if you guys want to learn how I created this animation loop you guys can click here and if you guys want to create something like this you guys can click the playlist over here so thank you guys for watching this tutorial if you guys liked it leave a comment and subscribe to the channel so thank you guys see you in the next one peace